Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today's guest is actually a returning guest. Um, and that's Krishnan Kapoor, who's the Market Intelligence Manager at the World Gold Council. Um, he's here to discuss the gold demand trends quarterly report for, for Q1 2021, uh, which is the World Gold Council's leading piece of intellectual property. Um, the, they produce reports on a quarterly basis, which analyze the global um, gold market, examining global supply and demand, um, as well as wide industry trends with investment, jewelry, technology, and, um, and mining sectors. Um, we actually spoke back in October 2020, which was episode 99. Um, so maybe anyone listening would want to revisit that episode um, and obviously check out that, that episode. And obviously that was a new report um, and see obviously what changes have occurred from then to sort of now. So want to uh, welcome Christian to the, back to the podcast. How are you doing, Christian? Hi, Rob. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, no, I appreciate your time as well. So um, for those that haven't um, previously heard you, I wondered if you can just give us a brief overview of yourself, um, what you do, um, a little bit about the Gold Council. And um, yeah, and I've got obviously some questions to ask you around the report. Of course. Um, so I've, I'm the senior analyst for the EMEA region at the World Gold Council, and I sit within our research uh, team. Um, and the World Gold Council, uh, for those who don't know, are uh, the, the, the kind of the authority on gold. Uh, we're a market development organization uh, within the gold market. Uh, and our objective really is to sustain and stimulate the demand for gold. And so uh, our role is, is to interact with market participants, um, uh, kind of intervene in markets where we see we can add value. Um, but we also look to try and put out um, a lot of uh, research so, and try and educate uh, investors, uh, but but anyone who's interested in gold, um, as to what they should know about about the, the metal, um, and so that's part of the reason why we put together our, our quarterly gold demand trends. So I'll be happy to go through the the insights from that uh, today. Yes, yeah, certainly. So I wonder if you can um, give us what are the driving gold uh, driving gold's performance this year so far. So it's a really, really interesting uh, quarter that we've seen in the first, uh, the first uh, few months of 2020. So what we've really seen is overall that global economies are, are beginning to recover uh, from this, this long spell, this long impact of the pandemic. Uh, and, and we're starting to see um, increases in consumer demand for gold. Uh, and that's helped offset some weakness that we've seen in uh, some more institutional type products such as ETFs, which saw outflows uh, during the quarter. Um, when I mentioned also about uh, consumer demand, we saw that uh, Im improve and that was predominantly on the jewellery side. So we saw significant recovery in the jewellery jewelry space, um, although it does tend to or has seemed to still be slightly subdued compared to the historical levels pre uh, the pandemic. Um, we also saw um, uh, central banks continue to, to be net purchasers. They increased their, their demand for gold by 95 tonnes. Um, and that was a very positive, a positive step after a relatively inconsistent H2 uh, of 2020 that we saw. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, um, obviously, um, well, actually, I was going to ask, government, uh, governments buying gold. Is there any particular governments um, buying or have bought more gold this part of uh, this quarter this year than previous? Yeah, so it's actually really, really, really interesting. So we've seen uh, four central banks during the quarter account for the bulk of the purchases that we saw. So India uh, added a further 19 tonnes to their gold reserves, and they've been a regular purchaser since about December 2017. Now, in addition to them, we've also seen buying from Kazakhstan. They added about eight tonnes. And Uzbekistan, they, they bought uh, 23 tonnes. But actually, the biggest story uh, on the buying side for the quarter came from Hungary. So uh, in March, the central bank announced that it bought 63 tonnes. That's tripling uh, its gold reserves up to 90, 94, 95 tonnes. Um, and it was, uh, it was also the fourth largest monthly purchase by any central bank um, since uh, 2009. So it really was quite big news in, in the market. Um, but, but we didn't just see uh, purchases, we also saw some sales. So we saw a decline in gold reserves in Turkey in particular, but also the Philippines, uh, the UAE and Russia. 
Uh, and that's that's for a number of reasons that could be down to we've seen previously economic hardship as a result of the pandemic, uh, especially we saw that at the end of 2020. Uh, there's also the need for uh, selling gold in terms of managing domestic demand. Uh, Turkey has a number of uh, gold policy tools that it uses, which can impact the level of its gold reserves. Uh, and, and finally, uh, we also saw some selling. So Russia in particular, I mentioned that sold about three tons. Uh, and that was related to its coin minting program. So uh, the, the production of coins for, for general sale. Um, so bringing it all together, I think overall, while we, while we did see purchases and sales, we, we uh, continue to expect that, that for 2021 as a whole, central banks will remain net purchasers. Um, and that's generally because we believe that the kind of the sentiment towards gold from the central banking community hasn't really shifted very much. So that that kind of keeps us uh, keeps us on a positive footing there. Yeah, um, you mentioned obviously jewelry has has increased. Um, is there any particular countries that have sort of purchased more gold for jewelry as opposed to sort of central banks? So that's absolutely right. We saw, uh, I think, in the region of a fifty percent increase year on year uh, in jewelry um, compared to Q one. Now, admittedly, Q one twenty twenty was impacted by the pandemic, so it was a relatively low base, but. We, we saw that India and China, the two largest markets in, in, in the gold mar global gold market, were, were really the engines behind this uh, gold jewellery recovery. Um, in China, in particular, we saw that gold demand was supported by festival sales. So we had Chinese New Year uh, fall uh, at, the, at the start of the year. We had Valentine's Day. And interestingly, we also saw uh, increased demand for gold around International Women's Day. So that was a really, really positive story. Um, and some of that was helped by the pandemic, strangely. So we saw that there were government policies um, in place to help restrict movement in terms of uh, encouraging people not to travel uh, to, to, in, all, in order to, to, to limit uh, any potential spread. And, and that actually helped free up uh, travel budgets uh, to be able to be spent on, on other items such as gold. Um, so that was, that was one particular one. In India, uh, I mentioned, the other larger gold market, uh, we saw increased buying from uh, from consumers as economic uh, kind of confidence started to return to the market. And that came at a time where we saw fall, falling gold prices as well. So that kind of helped uh, the, the affordability angle uh, that, that consumers often consider. So those are some of the, the dynamics that we saw. Um, and often when people think that we hear about economic expansion, you know, we, we see growth and, and, and generally a positive, a positive economic picture. People assume that's bad for gold, but, but typically um, sectors related to the, the kind of the consumer side, such as jewelry or technology tend to actually be pro-cyclical. So they actually are, are benefited from economic uh, expansion. Uh, and that's exactly what we saw in, in Q1 as people became more confident about the economic picture um, they actually they were actually able to spend more, um, and uh, the, the, some of that was was filtered into gold. Um, where were the most interesting developments globally for sort of gold demand in Q1? So I think it's it's interesting if we take a look at the sector picture and then and then the 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 kind the kind of geographic picture. So at a sector level. Um, we saw um, a slightly divergent picture. And, and one thing that we often talk about is gold's dual nature uh, and how that relates to the self-balancing nature of the gold market overall. Now, when I talk about dual nature, I'm talking about gold um, as that kind of wears two different hats. It's an investment asset, uh, but it's also a consumer good. So depending on the market conditions, we may see those elements of demand behave differently. And really understanding that is key to understanding a gold's diversification benefits and its potential as a source of long term returns. So what we tended to see was while uh, risk and uncertainty maybe came down ever so slightly as investors in particular became more confident or more optimistic about the economic outlook. Um, following a, a very, very difficult 2020 um, on the institutional side, we saw people actually move out of gold to a degree. And that's what resulted in those ETF outflows that I mentioned I mentioned earlier. Um, but while that picture um, is more counter cyclical, what we've seen, uh, as I mentioned, is that on the consumer side, 
we actually saw improvements in, in gold demand uh, recovering. So on the bar and coin demand side, we saw uh, increases in all categories uh, for, for bar and coin. And similarly, I've already spoken about jewelry, but also technology too. So it really depends on, on how the different elements of, of, uh, of the gold market kind of react. And so what we saw last year, especially, was strength in investment demand and weakness in consumer demand. Now we've come into 2021 and we've seen that kind of switch ever so slightly. We're seeing more strength on the consumer side, those consumers coming back to the market because they are no longer limited by lockdowns or as many lockdowns um, and, and they're more willing to spend with the uh, stronger economic picture, whereas investment has, has, has weakened slightly. So it's a really interesting, interesting dynamic. Now at a geographical level, on the investment side, especially bar and coin demand, we saw strength pretty much across the globe. There were very, very few areas of, of weakness. We saw improvements uh, in, in most countries. Um, and so it really, it really lends itself to telling us that um, at the, on the consumer side, it's, it's, a, it's been a very positive picture so far this year. Yeah. Um, how is the investment demand um, faring now? Obviously, econom uh, economies are starting to unlock. And obviously, there's been may have been issues with obviously COVID. So you're absolutely right. We saw a lot of that last year uh, with with consumers in particular um, locked down for a large part of last year, uh, or, or or limited to, to where they were able to to travel to uh, when when the lockdowns were eased ever so slightly. Um, that had a real impact on consumer demand, both on the bar and coin side and jewelry side. Now, what we're seeing. Uh, currently, uh, in many places, is that lockdowns are beginning to, to be eased. Um, now, you would think that, that that potentially might be negative for, for investment, and, and certainly for a portion of it, it's a, it, it has been. But if we look particularly at bar and coin demand, we've seen a, a pretty strong picture. So during the quarter, uh, both the US Mint and the Perth Mint reported record or near record sales of gold coins. Um, uh, which we kind of uh, kind of underpinned the the kind of uh, the the evidence that we saw for that strength in in demand. So there are still motives out there for buying gold as an investment. Now some of those are linked to uh, the picture and concerns for inflation. So we know that in in the first few months of this year, uh, as economic economies have begun to improve and people are, are thinking more and more about the speed of an economic recovery, the the concerns have shifted to. Uh, potential inflationary pressures and, and what that might mean and how quickly they may, they may uh, take hold. So investors, even on the bar and coin side, that has been one of the main motivations that we saw during the quarter for, for those, those large levels of, of, of demand that we saw. Um, so it, it's still, still quite a, an interesting picture on, on, the bar and coin, on the bar and coin side too. Yeah. With bars and coins, obviously, uh, they, if you had a one ounce bar and a one ounce coin, is there any differences between between the two? Obviously, apart from the shape. Yeah. So, um, if we're talking about the gold itself, no, there shouldn't be any difference. Um, it should should be the same. Um, it, it, there are factors such as the fineness of the gold that's used. So, um, for, you know, it may be uh, whether it's considered pure gold, which is towards the twenty four carat end, or if it's something uh, that that um, contains a bit more of another metal, such as eighteen k. Um, to, to, and, and the reason why they use those alloys is, is to make to make it a bit more a bit more firm, a bit more hard. Gold is is quite a soft metal at, at its purest form. So no, there shouldn't be any uh, any difference um, when it comes to prices. I think uh, you know it, there might be labour costs and and and, uh, and charges and such and such that might um, that might cause differences in the prices uh, as well as geographic dynamics. Um, I, I, we don't really go into that kind of detail, so I can't give any more than that. But certainly, from a, a, a metal standpoint, a one ounce coin and a one ounce bar should be should be very very similar, if not exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, no, it's something I I, I was really uh, yeah, curious to know. So, um, how um, how is the sort of gold supply fa uh, faring with um, the obviously disruption caused by the pandemic? Obviously, transferring and moving metal around the world. So it's it's a really interesting interesting story. So you're you're right to flag um, uh, supply and the disruption caused by the pandemic. So last year, uh, in in Q, pretty much the first half, Q1 and Q2, 
uh, we saw um, mine production be affected um, fairly significantly by by the pandemic, we saw um, temporary suspensions of projects in certain jurisdictions around the world um, that, that kind of hampered hampered gold demand. Uh, sorry, gold production um, to to a to a degree. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, but what we saw is as we moved past Q2 and into the second half of the year, those disruptions started to ease, and in fact, we started to see those those uh, projects that were disrupted by, by COVID start to resume full, full production. And now um, overall last year, we saw a 5% decline um, uh, in, in mine production. Now, when you think a 5% decline uh, compared to the scale of disruption caused by the pandemic, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty robust, I would, I would argue. Um, and, it, and it speaks to, um, the kind of the, the, the robust nature of, of gold mining being that it's it's mined on every continent bar Antarctica and that geographic disper, uh, diversity sorry um, lends itself to, to to making the gold mining uh, far more uh, kind of robust in terms of, of any potential shocks such as the pandemic uh, where we see closures in, in one part of the world in other parts of the world money mining, mining was able to continue uh, virtually unaffected so we did see a disruption to to to, uh, to a degree um now what we're seeing in q1 uh, of this year is actually those disruptions really aren't factoring in too much into into the picture on the mine production side um we generally saw a, a kind of a, a, a slight recovery in, in in that i think it was four percent higher year on year um and and that was due to the fact that those disruptions that were impacting particularly china in q1 last year um, but then more globally, uh, as we as the, war, uh, the year drew on, um, it's, it's kind of been washed out of the picture. We're kind of not seeing those those impacts uh, kind of uh, kind of impact the projects uh, that that we noted last year as much, uh, if at all. So the the mining picture is starting to to kind of be much more what we would usually expect uh, had had the pandemic not been there. Um, we should also make note of recycling too. It's another important part of of the gold supply picture. About 25% uh, of annual annual supply comes from recycling. Now we, we saw a, a very uh, a very limited response to to um, recycling last year, despite the big increase in in the gold price that we saw last year. Uh, and some of that was down to um, lockdowns, for example, people couldn't get out of their houses to go and sell back their gold. So that kind of choked off that that kind of um, a channel of supply. Uh, if we fast forward to to Q1 this year. Um, we've actually seen a similar picture. We've seen uh, recycling uh, decline ever so slightly. Um, now, the, that was probably due to um, the price having fallen over Q1. Um, I think it, it's indicative of uh, consumers being keenly aware of what's happening to the short-term movements of price and that having an effect on, on the level of recycling. Um, so it's, it's certainly an interesting dynamic that we've seen over Q1, um, and it's something that we'll be watching for the remainder of the year. Yeah, we were mentioned obviously about gold production in quarter one. Did you see any particular continent or any, even particular country that produced produced the most or produced more from previous quarters? Yeah, we, we absolutely did. <clears throat> we saw some big increases in, in Asia, in Mongolia, for example, we saw increases at uh, a project Oyu Tolgoi. Uh, in Indonesia, we saw higher production from, from Grasberg, which is an incredibly large mine. Um, but then also in North America, both in Canada and, and the United States, we saw increases as well. Um, but again, like with most quarters, you know, there are increases, but there are also decreases too. So uh, China, we noted, um, had, had declines, and, and this is a continuation of uh, a sustained period of declines in, in Chinese mine production. Um, similarly, in Peru and Argentina, we also saw uh, declines in South Africa, um, uh, sorry, South America. Um, so we did, we did see a, a, a kind of a, diver, a diverse picture in terms of increases and decreases over Q1 2021. Okay, and concluding, um, what's the sort of outlook for gold for the remainder of this year? So I think it's, it's there's a there's a number of factors that we have to consider when when considering uh, the outlook. Obviously, it's incredibly difficult, as it has been for the last year or so, to kind of predict with any sort of certainty what what may happen. But uh, we look to a number of factors that that can help can help guide that. So I think uh, 
if we consider uh, where uh, inflation um, is uh, or the level of inflation expectations, if we think about uh, interest rates. So while we've seen interest rates increase marginally over, over the year so far, overall, they still seem, uh, they still are structurally low. So that, that makes it far more, a far more conducive environment for gold investment. Uh, equally, we've also seen uh, an increase in liquidity in the market. We've seen greater levels of fiscal and monetary stimulus from governments across the world. And all of that uh, kind of adds to that inflationary pressures that I've spoken about. Um, so those could provide some levels of support for, for gold as an investment in particular. Um, but, but again, we have to see how things play out. On the consumer side, I think we look to, to the, the, the speed uh, 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 of the economic recovery how quickly that, that might happen um, and, and, and what that could mean for consumers if we continue to see uh, an improvement, if we continue to see uh, income growth, uh, that could bode well for, for the consumer side. Uh, we could see continued uh, recovery in the jewellery space. Uh, we could see continued buying uh, for technological devices which contain elements of gold. Um, so there are a number of factors, again, dependent on how, how they move that could impact gold demand. As I said, there's that pro-cyclical uh, and counter-cyclical elements of demand. So it's, 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 there's no one picture that can mean one thing for, gold, for the gold market. So we have to, we have to watch a number of, a number of uh, metrics and variables to, to then get a sense of what we think might, may or may not happen. Yeah. Krishna, appreciate your time and uh, give us an update uh, uh, for quarter one uh, on gold. If our audience wants to reach out to you, if they've got any questions, um, how can they go about doing that? So if uh, they have any interest in our, our research and, and data, uh, they can visit goldhub.com, which is our, our main website for all of the, the content that we produce. Uh, and anyone interested in gold, I would encourage you to, to take a visit. Um, equally, they can find us on Twitter um, and, and LinkedIn. Um, again, we, we highlight a lot of the, the work and the research and the education we try to put out there. Um, so by all means, if, if you're interested, please try and reach us out on one of those platforms. Yeah, no worries. And we'll include that all in the show notes uh, below and accompanying this podcast and YouTube uh, video as well. So um, appreciate uh, the update. Hope uh, hope our audience has got, um, got an, uh, obviously more of an understanding of uh, what, what gold is obviously used for, but also um, some of the trends that have happened at the beginning, the beginning this year. Um, look forward to speaking to you in quarter two. Uh, where you can get give us an update uh, what's happening and obviously as the year progresses so um, appreciate everyone that's listening if you can um, share and like this episode pass it on to um, maybe not even just necessary people in the mining industry but other people that have an interest in gold which I imagine a lot of people would do um, appreciate if you can uh, pass this episode tell them about it um, so they can uh, have a wider understanding of uh of the of the gold market so appreciate your time again christian um and look forward to Thanks, chatting Rob. to you uh look forward to chatting to you uh next quarter and until next time happy mining <laughs>